Good morning, church family, friends, loved ones. I pray that it has been a blessed week for you. It's been a profoundly busy week around here. It's board meeting week, so that meant we had meetings every single day in leading up to board meeting. Sunday is our official kickoff of our stewardship campaign for 2021. We've reached out and asked the elders to be praying for this stewardship pack, uh, program. We've sent packets to church members with devotionals, prayer guides, and other things in preparation for this campaign. It is called Faithful, Hopeful, and Loving. Sunday, I'll preach the first of a couple of sermons on stewardship, and Sunday's is a new look at stewardship, a look at stewardship through the eyes of serving others. And that's today's topic as well as we do this daily devotion. Serving others is stewardship. So I want to look at how we at Central Christian Church are good stewards of not only your gifts, God's love, and the resources you entrust to the church as we serve others. Now, this topic is incredibly important to me, and I think it's important to Jesus as well. There are many passages in the gospel that talk about this very thing. Jesus serving others, encouraging the disciples to serve others, encouraging other believers to serve. One of the most interesting is in John chapter 21. I want to share that with you today. So listen to these words, and may God touch your heart. When they finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, or John, Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you, he said. Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he answered, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. And a third time, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him for a third time, do you love me? And he said to the Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you are younger, you dress yourself and went out where you wanted. But when you are old, you stretch out your hands and someone else dresses you and leads you where you may not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them the one who had leaned back from Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who will betray you? And Peter said to Jesus and asked, what about him? And Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is it to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the, the rumor was spread among the disciples that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is it to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down, who know that it is my testimony, who know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. May God bless you this week. May God's word speak to you this week. This passage of scripture is very interesting to me. There's a great deal going on, and the writer seems to recognize that people are going to ask questions, that people want to know the whole story and that they have not been told the whole story yet. That last bit at the end, I think, addresses that. But what I want to talk about is Peter. 
I want to talk about the questions that Peter was asked by Jesus and the instructions that Peter received from Jesus. Do you love me? Jesus asked Peter. That very same question could be asked of us today of in the modern church. Do you love Jesus? Now, you may want to just immediately say, yes, yes, I do. But wait just a minute and let's let's go over that together. Now, first of all, this question of do you love me? Then do this is what mathematicians would call an if then statement, kind of a word problem. If you love Jesus, then you will do this. And Jesus lays those out for us. The first, if we love Jesus, Jesus says, feed my lambs. Now, this can be looked at from a couple of different ways. Feed my lambs could be raise up our children. Raise up the next generation of the church. Teach them all that God has taught you. Love them. Show them the ways of Jesus. It could be just as easily said to be teaching new believers. Helping them, helping the young with their faith. Helping them grow to understand Jesus better, to deepen their relationship with Jesus and God. This is Feed My Lambs. Next, Jesus said, if you love me, take care of my sheep. To me, this is an instruction to, pe to help people who are in need. An instruction for people who believe in Jesus, who love Jesus, to care for the needy among us, to help those who are hurting, to stand with those whose voices have not been heard or have been ignored too long, to love our neighbors as ourselves just as Jesus has loved us. Lastly, feed my sheep. This last instruction is, has so many different implications for us each and every day. It's hard to consider them all in just the few minutes we have. Feed my sheep can be the command to go and feed the hungry, just like the second one can be. It can be a command to go and grow the church, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, just as Jesus said in the Great Commission. This command to Peter encompasses all of the instructions that Jesus gave his disciples from the beginning of his ministry to the very end of his earthly ministry. This entire this entire passage of scripture should challenge the whole of the church today. It should challenge our faith, stretch our faith, grow our faith. If only we're brave enough to ask ourselves, do we really love Jesus? One of my favorite passages in the scripture goes hand in hand with this story. It's from Micah 6, 8. God has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. So will you answer this question today? Do you love Jesus? If so, what is God calling you to do and be today? I look forward to seeing and worshiping with you Sunday. Have a blessed day.